Okay, so today is Tuesday, July 21st. Uh, forgetting what the dates are nowadays, it's all a blur. It's all a large finger painting, blur of a finger paint. Um, and just recently, uh, the Minneapolis Parks and Rec Board uh, decided to uh, limit all uh, parks to 25 tents a camp. So if you're not familiar with what's going on in Minneapolis or probably really any city, the shelters uh, are down uh, due to, to, to COVID and coronavirus and churches are down as well. So everybody's been forced to go to a park with a tent to live and that started happening and it started, you know, booming and, and, and spreading and it was somewhat sustainable. It got de, um, destabilized uh, by a lot of um, outside activity and also by the city itself destabilizing uh, these camps uh, and kind of just shaking up the community. And now the Parks and Rec Board decided it was a great idea to basically kick everybody out of the parks and uh, whittle it down to 25 a park, if I, if I read correctly. Um, the irony of this is that you see pictures of, uh, you see pictures of machinery and cops dealing with these encampments, these homeless encampments. And what does it cost to move these cops and machinery around? Well, it costs money. And it costs money that you could have been spending to actually get to the actual root of the actual problem. This shows you between the governor, the mayor, city council, Parks and Rec, the, the whole loop of it, just the, the abject failure on everybody's part to get to the root of dealing with homelessness in the city of Minneapolis. And I, I, I would love to hear, I'll just preemptively say this before we even finish this video, in, in the comments below, correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me what you think the first step to dealing with homelessness is. Uh, I sat down with the Hennepin County uh, official and we talked about the three main reasons why, why homelessness occurs. Addiction, mental illness, and family trauma. And from the many times I was down at the Powderhorn camps, I mean, within 15 minutes, there were two fights and somebody who had gotten robbed, like within 15 minutes. So the frustration is high. The sun is beating down on everybody. You're at a point of crisis. You're also probably at a point of uh, a medical crisis as well. You may be sick. You don't know. Um, people are doing runs back and forth with, um, you know, certain uh, substances and whatnot. But it's, it's just to basically get people through the day. And, and it's, it's a mess. I mean, to, to, to say it in the least, it's a mess. And it's a mess that the city doesn't need to clean up, but needs to take responsibility for. And that starts with addressing one of the three things, or all of them at the same time, if you'd like, at any point with all the money. Um, addiction, family trauma, and mental illness. Now, by just replacing people or putting them somewhere else, it, it, it destabilizes it even further, and it also treats these vulnerable people in vulnerable communities it puts them in a more vulnerable place. So they're, they're, they're actually scattered all throughout. And whereas you had, you had a central locations where people could like show up and help, now it's all over the city. I don't know what the future looks like. And maybe this is the right move. Maybe, maybe it turns out better than I could have ever thought. However, the question I have for everybody is, how do you think a city or community should engage with homelessness to help it and solve it at its root. Um, I'm not gonna sit here in, in, in soapbox and claim like I have the best answer. Uh, watching police and machinery uh, basically uh, arrest volunteers and homeless people um, does not seem like a great idea to me at all. Uh, seems like a, a pretty, uh, it seems like it's further traumatizing the people and it's criminalizing the people that are trying to help. And it's showing you just how little this city cares, if at all, about its most vulnerable citizens. And it enrages me to, to, to no end. And so while I kind of have an idea of what I want to do with public media, with, 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 with homelessness, that's going to probably be the next, the next step in a few months. Um, but to do it in the right way. Uh, and I, I just don't understand why they would, they would just uproot everybody, uh, families, women and children, men, uh, non-binary, trans, people all over, all over the spectrum of identity that are experiencing homelessness and just toss them about. And two years ago when the encampment sprung up on Hiawatha 
and city council couldn't get it together and they decided Red Lake had to step in and then take everybody for the winter or at least provide some type of roof uh, for the winter for homeless people. It just, it makes you a little bit uh, discouraged to see that your city can't, with all its money, all its power, all its staff, uh, although it doesn't have a lot of staff to deal with homelessness, um, it has, I think, nine homeless access staff members for 9,000 homeless people. So that kind of shows you uh, where the city's at already in their compassion for it. But it's discouraging to see this move, and I want to know what you think. Really, truly, uh, sound off in the comments, and, and so I, I would love to see some type of dialogue going on on what you think should be the next move uh, for the city of Minneapolis or your city in ending homelessness. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for right now, and I will be speaking on this probably weekly because it's changing, it's evolving, and it seems like the city uh, is also scrambling to figure out what they can do because perchance it's the aesthetics or the look that they didn't want, like, oh, we can't have all these people here at the same time, it makes us look bad, so let's disperse them throughout, which supposedly would look better. I, I don't know if that's their, their angle, but it, either way you slice it, it's not good. And it's, it's, uh, it's irresponsible, and it's also, uh, it's culturally incompetent. 100% culturally incompetent. So let me know what you think of that. Uh, we'll be talking about this more and more down the road, uh, as you know that this is, you know, of the many things I'm soft-spoken on, this is the one thing I promise you I will never be soft-spoken on. So, um, yeah, we'll be in touch and we'll talk to you more about that later. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video.